What has the United States done so far to help the world fight COVID? As we all understand with COVID, it's not the problem of just one country. It was impossible for us simply to think about the United States. It was very, very important to think globally. We have done that and worked with our partners through COVAX and others mm -hmm. to, first of all, get vaccines distributed around the world. We have seen through Omicron mm -hmm. how this continues to spread mm -hmm. and how even though the United States has now sent over 350 million doses um, through COVAX and with our partners around the world that this pandemic still continues and we are seeing really really challenging numbers in a lot of our countries including in the US and including in mm. Pakistan. You refer to Omicron. Uh, how is this virus now uh, spreading in the US and how you are containing it? Uh, we have seen in the United States and in other countries including I think here in Pakistan um, that Again, even people who have been vaccinated, even people who have been fully vaccinated and had a booster, still are catching this very, very contagious variant of COVID. Um, and, and, and with that, are potentially passing that on to others because it is so contagious. And I have to say, Pakistan has been a tremendous partner for the United States in working on the challenges of COVID together for us here at the U.S. mission. Uh, you refer to Pakistan, so how has the U.S. government supported the government of Pakistan with responding to the COVID-19 outbreak? We have donated 42.6 million doses, mostly of Pfizer, um, and then about five and a half million of Moderna as well, to Pakistan. And so if you do the math, 42.6 million doses out of 350 is around 12% cool. of the entire supply that has gone globally out to the world to help fight COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, the reason that that is so interesting and such a powerful testament to the relationship between the United States and Pakistan mm -hmm. is because we have worked together, our two countries, for literally decades in helping to bolster the health infrastructure in Pakistan. The infrastructure was there when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. First of all, it enabled us to train additional health workers, mm -hmm. uh, to create mobile labs. We, uh, we were able to donate 200 ventilators in 2020. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason now that almost 12% of the entire global supply of donated vaccines through COVAX mm -hmm. have come to Pakistan has been because, and this is 110 countries it has gone to, mm -hmm. but the largest number to Pakistan because Pakistan has so effectively been able to take those vaccines, move them around the country to the communities where the, where the greatest need is, mm -hmm. and to get the shots in the arms. Mm -hmm. And so Pakistan is able to absorb those donations and use them efficiently and effectively. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge testament, not only to our partnerships, but the success uh, of the, the government and the health structure of this country to take care of its people. Why is it that Pakistan has not been as terribly affected as its neighbors? Pakistan has managed this very well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think there's still much that needs to be done. We're expecting another, uh, another few million doses in by the end of the month. What other significant health assistance has the United States uh, provided to Pakistan? The ability to, uh, to work across decades to help um, the people of Pakistan. Um, so this has taken many, many different forms, including, again, the creation and the support and structure of the National Institutes for Health. Mm -hmm. um, this has supported laboratories around the country uh -huh. um, who can do testing, who can do communication yeah. to the populations, and who can rapidly respond to any health issue and any health crisis. Mm -hmm. and again, because those were already in place, Pakistan has been able to be really effective mm -hmm. in dealing with COVID mm -hmm. um, because they could 
act quickly and efficiently. Mm -hmm. And so training healthcare workers, uh, helping to educate the public on medical issues is always critically important. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and now working towards the creation of Pakistan's own Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Mm -hmm. The fact that so many Pakistanis uh, have gone to the United States yeah. and studied medicine and mm -hmm. brought their expertise back, including Dr. Faisal Sultan. To yeah. and, and I'm very proud that, that, uh, that we're able to say he, he received part of that education in the U.S. Uh, right now we have over 8,000 Pakistanis studying in the United States this year. Mm -hmm. um, some of those, many of those, are training to be medical doctors. But we are also, through a number of our programs through USAID and other efforts, also training healthcare workers right here in mm -hmm. Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And that is particularly important at the provincial level. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we were talking about KP. Um, there, we had three mobile labs, mm -hmm. and they have been able to treat over the uh, through this COVID. Uh, period, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, close to 85,000 Pakistanis. Yeah. Um, and so it's not only those that are going to the U.S. and bringing that knowledge back, but it's also training experts right here in the provinces around this country. Mm -hmm. And you think, uh, being Pakistani, we are uh, observing the SOPs for, to, to, to make ourselves safe from the COVID? I think we can all do better. <laughs> right? I think, but again, among the things that I think Pakistan has done so well and so quickly in responding to some of the threats mm. is to look at its protocols. Those of us who work here at the U.S. Embassy in Islamabad, when we are going to travel anywhere, we need to have COVID tests. Yeah. Uh, we need to, and when we travel back to Pakistan, mm. we need to have a COVID test and, and we need to be fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And I applaud Pakistan for making some hard decisions and difficult policies in order to protect people. Yeah. In the United States, we could do better yeah. uh, because our percentage of, of vaccinated uh, Americans is uh, not as high as it could be. So we could do better ourselves, but I think, uh, make again, making some hard choices that if you want to go to the theater, um, you want to go see a movie, you have to be vaccinated. Is the United States doing anything to support Pakistan's fight against the climate change? Mm -hmm. This is another area where, as you know, again, day one in, in, in office, President Biden rejoined the Paris Climate Accord. Yeah, yeah. We have a great partner with Minister Aslam, who's also yeah. very committed, and the yes. Prime Minister has been very, very strong publicly about how important climate change is to his administration and to Pakistan. Yeah. Pakistan's very vulnerable. Very vulnerable. Uh, yeah. and, and, and so I think it's a recognition of, of those vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this goes to a decades-long partnership yeah. that we have had with Pakistan that the United States has been working with Pakistan on for decades mm -hmm. and bringing in, I believe it's 4,000 megawatts in clean energy to, to Pakistan, um, which is 400 million Pakistani. Our special envoy for climate, uh, Secretary Kerry, mm -hmm. has been very, very um, vocal and, and public about the need for us to do more. And we're finding a great partner in, in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, Secretary Kerry, Special Envoy Kerry, has met a number of times with the minister. On the, he's spoken with him virtually, and they have met personally on the sidelines of other conferences. How is U.S. mission in Pakistan supporting entrepreneurs? Entrepreneurship is critically important to any country. It certainly is to us in the United States, and it's critically important to Pakistan. Pakistan is facing some real economic challenges right now, and one of the greatest resources that this country has uh, is its people. It has a dynamic youth group, uh, bulge actually, uh, a fantastic workforce. It's, they're innovative, they're smart, they're focused on IT and other areas. Uh, and so, for example, we have the Startup Cup that we support, and this allows um, entrepreneurs with great ideas to work together, to network, and to start their own mm -hmm. company. We also sponsor regular events where entrepreneurs can get together and uh -huh. talk about ideas, and we're very focused on women uh, and making sure that w female entrepreneurs are, are getting in the mix. Mm -hmm. Another important part of that is English language. 
And so we have very large English language programs around this country to mm -hmm. help those perhaps who don't have the access yeah, they might. Yeah, that's, that's important. Uh, and through our English Works program, mm -hmm. um, tens of thousands of Pakistanis have, have been able to augment their English language skills, which makes them more competitive. Mm -hmm. And so we would love to see nothing more than to see fantastic, talented, uh, creative Pakistani mm -hmm. entrepreneurs really make a difference in the economy, and we want to help. Mm -hmm. Similarly, U.S. is also helping the Pakistan's Higher Education Commission. U.S. has been arranging various exchange programs. Yeah. Something on the We have 8,000 Pakistanis who are studying in the United States this year. Mm -hmm. um, we also have several hundred that are participating in professional or educational exchange programs in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, and even with COVID, even though that slowed it a little, this continues. And our cooperation with Pakistanis on education, starting from high school kids that might go on a year to an American high school, mm -hmm. uh, which can change their lives, to those who go to study at an American university, uh, to those that are going on professional exchanges. This is all helpful to, to Pakistan when they mm -hmm. come back with these experiences and this education and understanding. Pakistan here we have the largest Fulbright program in the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of all of our exchanges and our programs, we have the largest alumni program in the world of those who have been on our professional exchanges and educational programs. Mm -hmm. um, all of this is, it not only helps the higher education system within Pakistan, but it also, when these people go to the United States, they are ambassadors for Pakistan. Yeah. They also help us in the United States. to. Good. Thank you, Ms. Agler. Thank you so uh, much.